to stretch or not to stretch? That is the question. Recently saw a Shakespearean play, so it's gotten me saying nigh or nay all the time now. This is the most, <laughs> this is the most complicated of all the pages on my website. Um, I think it's complicated because the subject of stretching and flexibility is, is probably one of the areas of, of, of medicine that's probably the most poorly understood. A majority of you would want to stretch because you feel stiff or tight, and that's fine. Everybody gets up in the morning and kind of feels that thing, just like our cats and our pets do. They get up and they stretch out. And if you remember on Dr. Um, Headley video, which is another one of the pages here on the site, um, he calls this the fuzz idea. He tells the fuzz story of how pets like to stretch because it, a, a night of immobilization, a night where we're lying in bed and we're not presumably moving all that much unless you're a very active sleeper, you're lying there still. What happens when we lie there still? Well, a couple of different things happen. One is a really common reason for morning stiffness, which is called a gelling phenomenon. The gelling phenomenon occurs at the joint line itself. So let's just take, for instance, a hip joint. So I've got a big hip bone, oh, and I've got the acetabulum, and I have a femur. So the joint line being a bone that's next to another bone, there's usually some nice synovial fluid inside that joint line and you've got a couple of different types of cartilage that are allowing that smooth articulation. As we age, a lot of times some of the very low grade degenerative changes or in sometimes when you have you know when you have the incidence of a lot of osteoarthritis, a lot of chemistry is taking place overnight, but ultimately the gelling phenomenon is a thickening of fluids that's set inside that joint line. So you get up in the morning, you feel stiff and achy, and you get up and you start to stretch. You often take a shower, you start moving around, and ah, all of a sudden that pain's starting to dissipate. I think most of you can relate with that. That's an extremely common pattern that we hear as practitioners in our offices every day, is I woke up, I was super achy and stiff, and then after a few minutes it starts to go away. The younger people are that come to see me, the less I hear that story. So clearly, it's an age-dependent variable. So for those of you that are beyond the age of, let's say, 40 or 50 years old, or if you're lucky after 60 or 70, starting to experience that, you're likely dealing with a gelling phenomenon or a thickening of fluids that you're feeling in the morning as just a more viscous fluid that's sitting in that joint line. But Dr. Chatow studied stretching for muscles and myofascial stretching. So another thing that you'll see, and you, most of you probably could relate with, is the idea that that stiffness and that achiness in the morning is not so much arthritis happening in my joint lines, but tight muscles. Now in the case that you actually did a big long hike like we did a couple of weekends ago where you're on the trail for eight or nine hours, you will definitely wake up in the morning and feeling a little bit of stiffness and achiness. This is often seen as sort of the micro damage to the myofascial system and not so much a gelling phenomenon found in arthritic problems. So you've got two different ways that the symptom of tightness can manifest in your brain. One is you've drawn the conclusion that you are feeling pain coming from that joint line and the other is coming from the muscle tissue that moves that joint line. On this particular page, Dr. Chatow is discussing muscle stretching. So another interesting misnomer. There are four different theories to muscle stretching. What actually happens to a muscle when we stretch it? So. Uh, as stated earlier, the likelihood is that you're stretching those muscles because you feel stiff and achy. And the second conclusion that you might falsely draw is that the muscle tissue has actually been shortened. So for instance, if my bicep muscle here were to be adaptively shortened, doing lots of curls, I might want to take my arm and stretch it back out because I want to re-lengthen the muscle. I want to improve my overall range of motion, my ability to move within space. But Sadly to say, 
this is a lot more complicated than, than you would have most of the websites and YouTube channels that you visited. One, there are four main theories that Dr. Chatow has studied in regards to muscle stretching. And all four of them come up pretty much inconclusive. So I'm not gonna waste your time talking about viscoelastic qualities and some of the minutia of muscle stretching when most of the studies have shown it does not in any true sense lengthen a muscle. It's very possible that there are short-term effects of me taking my arm back behind me and lengthening my bicep muscle, but it's temporary at best. So I think the point that I'm trying to drive forward with this particular page on my injury concepts is be careful about what you think you're doing when you're stretching. One, don't overstretch and don't damage tissue. Let's take a look inside the muscle tissue to see what would happen actually if it did actually elongate. Inside are called sarcomeric units. The sarcomeric unit, again to simplify, are a group of structural proteins that are at certain distances apart and when we contract the muscle tissue those segments get closer together. When we relax they come back out and they assume their length. It's a lot more complicated than and I'm trying to share the passion that I have with it with you, but I'm not going to get so deep into these subjects that, you're, that I'm, I suddenly become the teacher on Charlie Brown. Um, but it is cool to know, and it is cool to know when to apply stretching and what type of effect you actually might get out of it. Now this said, many of you have probably woken up in the morning, felt really stiff and aching, and decided, you know, I'm gonna stretch out, and you feel better. And by all means, please do that. But do know that deep down, what you might actually be loosening up are the joint lines. Much more likely that that loosening effect that you're feeling is coming from a gelling phenomenon and not from tight muscles. So apply stretching judiciously, okay? Apply it a little bit, don't overstretch. A lot of people come to see me with injuries that they have been stretching and stretching and stretching. Oftentimes I have to ask them, okay, how often do you stretch? And of course they'll all brag and say, I stretch every single day. That's my first clue to say, stop stretching. Sometimes you're going overboard. Sometimes you're eating too clean. Sometimes you're stretching too much. Sometimes you're exercising too much. Everything in balance. So the point of Dr. Chatow's work is first to dispel some of the myths about actually what shortening of muscle tissue actually is. And in fact, the studies show there's very little evidence to support the idea that going to the gym and lifting lots of heavy weights, we've always looked at bodybuilder as somebody that's sort of muscle bound or lacking flexibility. That is truly not the case. Their ranges of motion tend to be very similar to the normal population. They're just simply bumping into themselves with one muscle group bumping into the other muscle group, giving the appearance of being muscle bound or lacking flexibility, but they're not at all. So heed some of those warnings here in this video. Remember, the more you know, the less you guess.